Hi everyone, Joshua Hinlin here at the Tank Museum Bovington, and today we're taking a look at the Brickmania Lego Panther tank on top of the massive Panther tank that the museum has here in their collection. So I'm here now with David, the tank expert, and Dan Siskin from Brickmania. So Dan, if you want to take us through your model of this incredible tank here. Right, well this is a Panther, this is a Panther Ausif G, so this is a late model Panther tank, which is actually what we're sitting in front, standing in front of right here. So this is uh, one of the later German tanks from World War II, it was a copy of the, 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 the Russian T-70, or T-34 uh, with the sloped hull, it has a lot of the, the same sort of elements that they learned and copied from the uh, the, the, the Soviet tanks, especially T-34. Um, it does have this m incredibly long, high velocity 75 millimeter gun, which is again a copy of a Russian piece, um, but made better uh, and more complicated, of course, by the Germans. Um, this is one of my favorite tanks of World War II, just because it has all the, the you know, some of the best features, it has some of the best mobility, best armor, best gun. Um, I mean, the only thing that, that really didn't make, you know, keeps us from being the, the best tank because they can only make a few of these. It was, it was just so complicated, so complex, and um, because of that had all sorts of reliability issues and, and then production issues. So um, you can't really see that in this, this model. Um, we, we do have the three guys, they're wearing sort of this late war, I guess a dot .44 camouflage. Um, this is a variant of a kit that Brickmania released several years ago. Uh, it's not no longer for sale, but it's, it basically embodies everything that we wanted to bring and show off about you know, the, the, what the, the tank that they have here in the museum. One of the things that catches your eye with this model, first off, is the, the camouflage patterns. So sure. what types of pieces did you use in there? And kind of when you're going for a camo design, what, how, do you, how do you go about that so that you know, it looks as realistic as possible? Well, this is a particular camouflage that the Germans were using near the end of the war, 1944. And I was trying to emulate the what they call ambush camouflage for, like, say, uh, that was around the used around the time of the Battle of the Bulge. So you know, it has olive this olive green color, um, a brown color. It's like a reddish brown, and that would kind of emulate the sort of ochre brown or o ochre red that the, the the Germans were using at the time. And of course, tan, uh, which is sort of a dunkelgelb, dark dark yellow color that the Germans were actually factory painting all these tanks in at the time. Um, so it's it's very typical of how they would appear in you know, the, the last year of the war. So, What are some of the details you were able to include kind of on the sides and on the back end here? Well, if, as you can see that there's lots of sloping, even the sides of the tank are sloped and that's just the way the real thing is. So using a combination of slopes, different techniques to get that appeared that way, uh, having the extra spare tracks attached to the to the armor. And of course this turret is sloped all the way around. It's, it's a multitude of different slopes. It's this particular turret, I mean, the, the basic design I came up with more than 10 years ago and I can't, still can't come up with anything better. I've been, this is like my, my fifth or sixth pan, Panther, and I, I can't come up with a better design. Um, it was one of those things that like I had an aha moment in the middle of the night, and I, I, I built it. Uh, <laughs> but it, you know, it does have some other features like semi-working suspension, which you try to incorporate. You know, you'll see that the wheels will drop down as it, as, as it, as it, as you pick it up. Um, you know, rotating turret. Of course, all the hatches, of course, open and close like they, they should, would on the real tank. And when you open, close the tank hatches of course you can, you can make the turret rotate any way you want i can see that i've got issues here <laughs> you are trying to play with it on the actual tank so it's a little harder than well, normal and we've been, and we've been ro carrying these around all day so they've been a little banged up and you know we, i am about three thousand miles from home so <laughs> there's there's all kinds of room for trouble um but so you mentioned that you know this is kind of the for the turret design it's something you've even revisited over the years is that something you do somewhat often where you'll come back to a tank design or a plane or whatever it might be and try to think up you know is there any way to improve every, this every time every t you know if I'm doing my due diligence every time I redesign an older kit I do have to like look at ways that we can improve it because of course Lego is coming out with new parts and we're always trying to incorporate the newest parts because if if you can do something better why not um, and you know, it's sort of like negligence on your part if, you, if you're if you not using the latest and the best parts. Always improve as much as possible. That's yeah. fantastic. So it's a great looking model. Now, David, can you give us some insight into the, the history of this particular tank? It was actually built by the British Army. At the end of the war, we took over the factory and built these tanks ourselves. So it, it is, in a sense, a British tank, although it is a Panther and a Panther G, as Dan said. It's uh, one of the last models they actually produced. Um, it's actually a very effective, I think probably the best German tank of the Second World War. Better than the Tiger, certainly. 
and probably better than the king tiger. Although the great thing with the king tiger is they built so few of them it didn't matter anyway. But um, this is a very effective machine. Though I once had a, I walked around it once with Tom Yentz, who was a, a great germophile from America, who wrote about them, and he was full of complaints, pointing out mistakes that had been made and design problems with it. I took no notice of him, but still. Um, it's quite an interesting vehicle, there's no doubt about it. 75 millimeter high velocity gun, um, the, a chin added to the um, mantlet so that it wouldn't take, wouldn't trap shot underneath. And the sort of cupola with the um, vision blocks in it at the top for the commander. So a very effective tank all round, I think. Lots of use of sloped armour because, as Dan said, they copied the T-34 insofar as they could, but it still has the same suspension as the Tiger, a torsion bar, overlapping road wheels, which can be a cause of a nightmare of troubles. It, um, they build up the mud between them and bring the vehicle to a halt. And that's one of the reasons that they had so many mechanical failures with them. But otherwise, a very good tank, I think, probably one of the best. I think the, the sloping armor is particularly noticeable here at the front. You know, you see where Dan's leaning against the front there, and it comes to quite the point there. Well, that was the whole idea to get as many angles. What they can do, if they put sloped armor in, it doesn't need to be quite so thick as vertical armor for the same effect, the same resistance to armor piercing shells, because they, in theory, glance off. And that's one of the main reasons behind sloped armor. It does make the tank awkward inside because you end up with um, sort of narrow bits to stow things in, in which all you can get is a tube of polo mints or something like that. It won't take anything larger. So there, there is a waste of space with sloped armor, but uh, they can make up for that by its um, piercing resistance, which is the main thing. This one's finished in a, a late war German camouflage, which in this case is the primer color, which is the deep red, with the sand blown over it just to, um, to get the tank out on the field as quickly as possible from the factory into the field in action as soon as possible. And that was what they were trying to do with these tanks. And that's why it came out like this. There you go. Well, thank you so much for that insight, David. And thank you, Dan, for the look at the model here. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to learn more about the museum's incredible collection of tanks, make sure to subscribe to their YouTube channel. And if you want to see more of what Brickmania has to offer, head over to brickmania.com.